You can't curse in the first 30 seconds of the video, so I'm holding back so much right now. We got some rain. It looks like I'm guessing there was flooding down here. Washed out from that berm, I'm guessing. I don't know. It's still raining. I don't need, I don't I don't know what to do. I guess we'll go drain it down. That would be the first thing to do. And then uh, I guess just have to clean it out. Oh, look at all the little dots in the sand. That's cute. It's just like actually being at the beach. Oh, oh, okay. There's a lot of mud over here. That's a lot of mud. How did, where did this come from? I'm wondering if it washed over the wall somewhere. That's happened before. Years ago, there was a downpour so bad that it actually broke through the wall. And it doesn't look like that's happened, so that's good. Things could always be worse, but where does... How'd this get here? Now, I'm wondering if before I came out here, I bet the water was up over the patio. This whole spot was probably flooded over here because things do slope in this direction. That's the only thing I can figure. The pool automatically is supposed to drain down when it gets to a certain level, which is why it's never filled up this high before. Never seen that happen. That was just downpours. There's flooding all over the place, so it could be worse. I know some people's homes are in danger. Actually, I need to go check the sump pump. But, well, right now I'm doing this. Oh, hey, what's up, Garden Friends? Jeff here. How's it been? Doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It's just a muddy pool. I'm not going to complain. Champagne problems, right? Oh, here's something I've never seen happen before. Oh, this is the pool. That's just, that's okay. That's supposed to be right there. So the water must have come gushing down and washed through right here, like a ravine. Look at this, the gravels washed out and everything. Okay, yep, that's what happened. This whole area probably filled up with water. There's a sewer there, or collection basin that goes to a storm store on the other side of the yard but it has to handle all the drain or run off all the drainage from all of these houses and you know, there's a new situation going on with this house up here and the i'm guessing there was probably just yep okay that's what i thought i wonder if this is going to be a problem with the way their yard's set up now where everything is just going to gush down into our yard looks like that's what happened here Oh, shit. Yeah, you can see the way everything is coming through. Just pouring from underneath their new decking into the yard. That's not great. We're going to have to figure something out with that because can't just have my backyard flooding every single time it rains. Not every single time it rains, but a heavy rain. It was pretty heavy rain, but we've seen heavier before. So I just realized this probably isn't safe. Right, because of electricity or something? I don't know, it's fine so far. Well, I have a feeling this week's video is going to involve some cleaning. There's another drain down there I need to clean out. Looks like it got clogged up. <sighs> hey, on the bright side, don't have to water today, so that's fun. Wasn't going to need to anyways. It's like 72 degrees, I have on a hoodie. It was 99 yesterday, and today I have a hoodie on, because it's like 74 degrees. Yay, summer. Oh yeah, look at everything's just washed out. I bet the whole patio flooded. It must have gone like from right there to all the way over here. That was underneath the glider and it came all the way over here. Hey, umbrella's still up. Palm trees didn't fall down. That's good. Okay, I'm going to dig out those drains. It's supposed to keep raining, so I should be utilizing the time while it's not storming to go over there and get those things dug out to help with any more flooding that might happen over there and then thinking it's supposed to be dry tomorrow and um yeah we're gonna be doing some work out here getting things cleaned up you think you're gonna help keeping him out of the pool that's been tricky yeah you really want to go swim and i really do not want him to go swimming right now it's getting a little bit clear cleaned out the filter a couple times going around gathering stuff it finally stopped raining i really wanted to get out here and do more cleaning but What's the point when it's still raining, right? All the washing that happened. 
stirred something up. It really does not smell good out here. It's also really humid. Look at that. Things are steamy. I'm definitely going to have to go to the hardware store <laughs> and get some more pool salt. Did I just turn that off when I threw it in there? I think I did. There's a button on the bottom of these. That's a hit the water. Just the right way to get it turned off. I don't really know why I'm doing this. I'm just sort of in the mode of anything I can get done, go ahead and get it done. I brought the trash bin out because I'm going to be scooping these skimmers and stuff probably like five, six times a day over the next few days. And the, yeah, I don't I think we're supposed to have more rain tomorrow too, so I don't really know what's going to happen out here. This isn't that big of a deal. I mean, it kind of sucks. It's going to take several days to get it cleared up. I don't really care about all that. Like I said, dirty pool, those are champagne problems. I'm more focused on getting all that dirt off the patio. I'm wondering how much stuff I'm going to have to move around, but just have to wait till morning and see. Oh, did I get them all? I thought there was more over here. Well, I got these in the mail like a week ago, and I've yet to see them work. They're supposed to be... Let me see if I can get y'all set up here. Pardon the shadows. Um, can you even see that? You know what's going on there? Probably not. Oh, okay. They just needed to be turned on. Yeah, yeah those are cute. You put them in the hot tub or in the pool, and they just float around. They're little solar-powered candles. They have different modes on them. I don't know what they do. I have the instructions. I just haven't had a chance to actually look at them. It probably just adjusts the flame. Okay, so that turns the flame off. And that's just a kind of a flame. Not really. Okay, I think that all it does is turn the flame on and off. Yep, that's all it does. So kind of cool. I put them in the pool so we can see what they look like, but I don't really think that that's gonna do them justice right now. Plants held up well. I know that I think I have a hibiscus that y'all can't see. That got blown over, so I need to go get that tomorrow. But I'm not seeing damage out here, which is shocking. I can't believe this palm tree didn't get blown over. And it's really dark. The breaker blue that goes to this light pole and all the stuff over here, and it's still too wet. I don't want to go over there and mess with the electrical stuff and deal with all that tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know. Things don't look too bad. Like I said, hey, I didn't have to water today, so <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, I don't think there's anything left I can really do. I'm just fidgety. That was in the house on the computer and, you know, it rained all day too. So I'm just, it's late and I just, I want to do something out here, but it would make sense to wait till tomorrow because, it, well, it's like nine o'clock. So what am I going to do? Get off the power washer at nine o'clock at night and start scrubbing the patio off? I don't think the neighbors would appreciate that. Um, I specifically told you no pool. Why are you dripping? Ugh. Someone's gonna need a bath. Everything here completely washed out, which that's fine. This whole area needs to be redone anyways. Backwashing the filter. So if you don't know what that's about, backwashing the filter. It's a function on the filter where it flushes all the gunk that the sand has collected out. I've been doing that about every two hours, something like that. And it's not making a huge difference, but you have to do it in order to keep the filter running because it keeps clogging up. And then you have to rinse it out, which only takes a few seconds. Traditionally, you wait until the water in that little ball turns clear. The problem is the water in the pool, it's not clear. So I've just been counting to like 15. And I think that's okay. And I was looking at the monitor over here, this thing. And it's telling, reading at 2,000 parts per million, I think is what it said. Air temp, air, all right. Storm messed up the sensors, 2,000. It's supposed to be at 3,000. By the time this is all said and done, I'm probably going to have to put 20 bags of salt in that pool, I'm guessing. It's going to be uh, multiple trips to the Home Depot to get that up and going, probably. Oh, I was also thinking, I turned the dolphins off because they really don't need to be running and I have everything else open full blast. And I can't remember, one of these is for the steps in the shallow end, I think it's this one. And I was thinking about turning that down because I would like for the majority of the pressure to be coming out from the sides of the filter to keep the water moving around. Now, I think that that, I'm pretty sure that that's, I don't think I pushed the right thing. Maybe I did, I'm not sure. How much water's pumping out of the sides of this thing? Not much, I have a diagram somewhere with everything written down. I'm gonna look up which one of those knobs does what. I know the one with the green does the dolphins, the other ones I'm not sure. It's cleared up a little bit since last night. It's all stirred up now. 
but you can see down like maybe eight inches. That's an improvement. Oh, hibiscus, poor hibiscus in my lovely pot. <laughs> I've been using to store a plug-in for the hot tub light. Oh, how did, where's the, what? How the heck did that happen? That's supposed to be glued in up here. I'm gonna have to get some liquid nails at the hardware store and get that fixed. Something smells horrible over here. Oh, I did just have all the wastewater from runoff water, not wastewater from one, two, three, four, five, six houses. Come down here and gully wash out this whole area. So that probably has, I bet the, I know what it is. It's the storm sewer. That's where it all goes. That's probably what that smell is. Okay, just have to get used to that. My biscuits got blown over. Oh, but it's still nice and moist. That's good. So at least it did get a good watering yesterday. That's nice. Set that back up there. Turn the dolphins back on. If it's gonna be ugly and nasty out here, may as well have something nice to listen to in the background. And well, really, actually, it was just the configuration that worked out the best to get the most water pressure to come out of these sight jets. So that sight jet right there, that one over there, there's more down there. Main thing there is I wanna keep the water moving and circulating so that all these particulates in the water can get cleaned out by the filter because the alternative to this would be to drain the pool down. I don't want to do that. I figure I'm going to have to backwash this probably 15 times, and every time I do that, it drops the water about, I'd say, half an inch to an inch, because when you backwash it, the thing I was just showing you, that water gets moved away. It doesn't go back into the pool. It turns into gunky wastewater. So uh, that would equate to 15 times, 15 times in addition to the five times I already did it, so 20 times, I'll just say. And it, so that would drop the water level by two inches. I'll go ahead and say two feet because sometimes I'm probably have to backwash it more than other times. That saves a lot more water than draining the entire thing. That'd be like 35, 38,000 gallons. That seems horribly wasteful. This is going to take longer maybe i don't know if i were to drain it that would take several hours and refilling it will take multiple days because our water pressure is terrible Man, he just he's loving life right now that is so gross turbo i don't it, actually you probably shouldn't probably shouldn't even be drinking much of that get out of there i don't know what's in that water this is all stuff that's just washed off from everybody's yards that could have pesticides or who knows what's in it on that note, should I drain it? Because I don't, who knows what's in this water? You know, those are probably good things to think about and be aware of, but I don't live like next to farmland or anything. I don't think any of these people are heavy pesticide or even herbicide users. So that's probably not something you need to worry about. And I guess I have a guinea pig now because somebody got in the pool, even though I told him not to. Why'd you do that? Yeah, I'm talking about you. You weren't supposed to get in there, Turbs. Gotta go hose him off. And then, uh, I just start picking up. Oh, I got a plant in the mail. I want to open the plant first. It seems way more exciting than dealing with all this crustiness out here. Yeah, it seems like more fun to open up a box. I don't know why there's that awkward silence at the beginning. I'm sorry. Sometimes I hit record before I'm ready to start talking. This one came in the mail over the weekend. This is a Vandacious type orchid. I can't remember its name. Like uh, maybe Joaquin. It's one I've grown before and I really liked. These are the. Uh, is this a semi -tur quarter turret? Man, I'm, I'm off my game with the Vandas. It's been a while. I used to grow tons of orchids and all kinds of stuff happened back in 2020. Other people were taking care of my plants and I basically said, don't worry about the orchids. Like that was too much. There were so many other things going on that I was like, if I lose the orchids, it's okay. It just wasn't a priority. There were other more important things going on. And uh, I've just been buying a couple new ones every year. The reason I like these types of vandas is because they can take a lot more sun they can go into full sun essentially they don't have uh, quite the same dramatic blooms on them that a lot of other vandas do but they're just easy because you can just stick them in the sun you don't have to wonder about making sure that they're in the right spot because the sun shifts around out here so there'll be times of the year where i'm like oh the vandas are flourishing and then the sun shifts and a couple weeks later they're scorched or the opposite and they're not getting enough sun, which that's not a big deal when that happens. That's always better than getting too much sun. But with these, you can just put them in the sun. They're real easy. Indoors, eh, not the easiest because they're heat lovers. But outside, just 
pops in some place where they'll get some light, make sure they get sprayed with water a couple times a day. So I put them someplace where the sprinklers will hit them and they'll bloom. Really pretty, kind of a pink and yellow flower. I'm sure I hopefully put it up on the screen for everybody. This one right here is an orchid that this will be my third one. My, the last, well, the first one died in 2020 and then I got a new one and uh, that one got taken away by the squirrels. Also, pardon the, I don't know if it's coming through. There's construction going on now at this neighbor's house. That one finished up and now this one's, they're doing something up there. I don't know why. Now, usually when I start doing orchid stuff on the channel, all of a sudden I can see in the stats on the YouTube creator page where like, the views just drop off. I don't really get it. Like people are like, oh, if it doesn't have giant leaves and it's not an aeroid, it doesn't count as a house plant or something. I don't, I don't understand that. A lot of what everybody's doing to grow their aeroids are exactly what you need to be doing to grow orchids and the orchids at least give you flowers but they are much more slow growing and there's a learning curve there's a learning curve with these other plants that cost a lot more money so i don't that's just my two cents on it i consider these house plants so i would consider this to be unboxing a house plant decent size i don't know what's going on inside here yet but it looks like this is probably going to be a nice big plant does it have shredded paper i hate the shredded paper that was stuffed in there. That was a two-handed job. I did not want to get those paper shreds all over the place. Here it is. Look at those fun growths. See, I think this is just as cool as the growth you get on a lot of aeroids. There's just something fun about them. Almost polyp-like. Polyp as in coral, not the other very unpleasant kind of polyp. You get what I mean. This is a Lelio Catlia Santa Barbara Sunset Showtime. One of my favorites, and my goodness, if the one I had in 2020 were still around, it would be huge by now. These have a very long inflorescence on them with beautiful flowers that have a slight trumpet in the middle, different shades of pink, orange, slight hint of coral to them. The flowers, when you see them in person, they almost look like they're glowing. It's a very beautiful orchid and a simple one too. The LC Lelio Catlia generally a very simple one to grow. This time around, I'm gonna keep it in the house. I'm not gonna bother keeping it outside because I know what the squirrels are gonna do. They're gonna grab it, they're gonna run off with it, and then I'm not gonna have an orchid anymore. So I learned my lesson with the other ones. <laughs> just to, just keep it inside. It's the squirrels will destroy it if I don't. Okay, that was fun. Orchid has been unboxed. Uh, I've, I'm, I'm just, I'm lost as to what I'm supposed to do next. I think that I really should get to the store and buy some salt because the water's not gonna clear up any faster if there's not enough salt in there because the salt is what's necessary to make the chlorine. Chlorine is what helps keep things more sanitary. Uh, but if the salt level's not high enough, the machine does nothing at all. And it says 2,000, it should be at 3,000, but I need to go get at least at least 10 bags for now and I have to go back and get another 10 bags. I don't even think 10 bags will be quite enough but I have at least one bag here. Cause like I said, I just, and what's the point of all this if the water is going to end up turning into a big bacterial bloom? There needs to be some source of chlorine in there. And I don't like using shock because it's harsh on the liners and risky with the environment. The salt is just much more gentle to wildlife because birds and all kinds of things come over here and drink. Well, not all kinds of things. Birds and the dogs, <laughs> they like to drink the water. The shock wears off. So as long as you keep them away for a while, it's safe, but it's just why use the chemicals when you can just use the salt, right? Oh no. Uh-oh, 50% off trees and shrubs. That could be a problem. Why do I have the music on? One of the other reasons I decided, hey, this would be a good time to go to pool salt is because the people who are doing construction up there were blasting copyright music. Copy written. Yeah, that's the word. Copy written music. So can't really film anyways when there's music blaring in the background. And this Home Depot, they have very loud speakers. So I don't, I'm going to do my best to film in there, but no promises that you're going to be able to see much. Oh uh, yeah, it's hibiscus season. They're looking good too. Which one? These are the Proven Winners Summerific Holy Grail. That's a pretty common one. Nice dark foliage. Big pretty flowers. Lots of cannas. Not seeing much else. These dahlias, they're looking a little bit rough. Not surprised by that though. The weather here has been so up and down that some of the plants don't look as good as they usually do in July. $10 queen ferns. I don't know if that's really that great of a deal. What do we got going on over here? These are nice big euphorias. Really big. Look at those. I'm not gonna get any, but I like them. Nice looking flowers on them. 
some red dracenas, some little baby bird of paradise. Yeah, it's kind of same old, same old going on out here. I'm not exactly sure why I'm even looking at plants. I'm not, it's not going to be room. I'm about to grab what? Four, five hundred pounds of pool salt. I don't think I'm going to be with any plants in the car, but you never know. If I find something I like, where there's a will, there's a way. Is this the nice purple on these Vinca? I like that purple. It's the really dark. Well, wait, hold on. Sunglasses are on. No, it's still pretty. This is what I was seeing. That, no, that's not what I was saying. <laughs> not even close. Zinnias and lots of other just fun annuals. Porto Laca and Calibrax. Those Calibrax are nice and full. Really full. Ooh. It's another good deal. 688 for the 10 inch classics. I wish those were the classics up there. Those. <laughs> okay, hold the camera still. Those pretty pink begonias. That would be nice, but they're not. Those are $30. That dichondra is nice. Look how full that is. Very lush. Lush and long. What a great price though. It's like five bucks for all these azaleas and everything being 50% off. Feels premature, but I guess this is fairly normal. All right, I'm sure that was loud and annoying. The music is very loud. So I'm gonna fill this up and if there's still room, might grab some plants. There's so much temptation here. Look at that, 20 bucks for those giant contorted filberts and those big sand cherries. That's such a good deal. It'd be really cool if the tropicals were on sale too. That would be nice, but it doesn't look like they are. I think all that's left in here like cotton easters and white gel. Oh, oh, I'm seeing yellow tags on the tropicals. That could be a problem. Oh, $2.98 for these Ixoras. There's a deal. These are pretty big too. Don't mind if I do. No, I don't know what I'm gonna do with them and that's fine. I'm gonna need a bigger cart. There's no way I'm gonna be able to fit all this on there. I already have a few other plants that are stacked up around there. I should probably just go. I should just go and come back. That's what I should do. Come back over the weekend or Friday. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, I didn't get the Ixoras. Wanted to, but just didn't really make sense. The yard doesn't get the sun that they need. This doesn't really matter. I shouldn't be putting those in yet. Uh, the yard just doesn't get the sun that they need. Uh, at least in a couple weeks it won't. In August is what I was going to say. It's about the bottom or really the midsection of a very large hill. You just can't rely on the sun for them. They don't look good without a lot of sun. They get a nice big hibiscus though. Only five bucks. Now, that's for the iguana and the tortoise, but still, good deal. <laughs> you see this? There's actual water bugs in there. You see this dude scrooting around? Didn't take him long to move in. He's just like, oh look, a pond. Except it's not. Those things show up even when the chlorine's going in the pool, so I'm not worried about him. <laughs> this is just, that's so gross. I am currently backwashing the filter. Again, need to unload the salt, get a lot of that put in the pool, maybe all of it. Find a broom and start sweeping the stuff away from the edge, and then get out the blower and blow what I can, and then power wash. Power washing might have to wait for tomorrow. It's got a little bit late. I feel rude using that thing later in the day because it's so loud. I think the water might be clearing up some more. I feel like I can kind of see deeper down in there a little bit. That needs to go down some more. Water should be below the top of the skimmer, or else the skimmers aren't going to do much good. I'm working again in the air of the toucan. I don't know what that is, some kind of stain. It's been there for years. Uh, the plug in the middle stuck. Can't get it off. But I need to get it put away because it just it takes up too much space. And it floating around the middle of the pool isn't helping me gather and net all this stuff out. And uh, this is mostly for when my nieces, niece and nephew almost said nieces. When they were in town visiting, I'm not really going to use this thing. Okay, good. That loosened up. Let this sit out in the sun for a couple hours and now we can get that off of there. Good. What if the salt reading's wrong? I hadn't thought about that. The water being all murky and weird. Maybe I'm not getting accurate reading. If I put too much in there, then it could end up bleaching out the liner. Uh, okay, well I guess what I could do is go ahead and put the salt in. I'll do eight bags instead of the 12. 
then give that a day, turn the coordinator off, turn the coordinator off, then give it a day, maybe two days. Yeah, Does that, nobody knows what I'm talking about, do you? Salt will dissolve, it takes a day or two with this much salt to get an accurate reading, and then I can turn the coordinator back on and maybe just use the chlorine tab in the meantime. Maybe that's what I should do. I don't know, it's, it's so many moving parts here. Is this thing still intact? I think it's good. Good enough. Anyways, this part shouldn't be too complicated. You can just bring that up here, line it back up. Just like that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, all right. Let's <laughs> push it back down. Yeah, that's good enough. Actually, it looks a lot better than it did before. I guess all that water it gave it a nice wash. That's an improvement. Maybe I should go through and fill in all the cracks with some sander gravel that's not let's think about other projects right now there's other things that need to be done who remembers last week when i didn't want to make a mess because the patio was looking so good and i said don't worry next week we'll get things real dirty yeah, i was right about that wouldn't i using the blower for the bulk of this makes the most sense i still want to go through and sweep as much of the stuff off of the edge as possible because it can be difficult to direct the flow of the blower you know, so you get the blower going, and it ends up blowing more stuff into the pool, and I think there's more than enough stuff in the pool. Don't need to add to that mess. I'm going to go through and just give all the corners a sweep. Yeah, Turbo, I saw you there. I keep telling you not to stand in front of me, dude. That's what's going to happen. Use your brain, Turbo. Move. Move. There you go. Yeah, like up here, the blower would just knock all that right into the pool. So may as well sweep it off to the side. That way, I don't have to go through and pull it out of the skimmers or with the net later. Not gonna be able to get all of it, but you know, the bulk of it should be good enough. I can just sweep it a few feet away from the edge. I think that should be good. Well, that already looks better. Yeah, missed a few spots, but it's okay. We'll come in, still have plenty of time to get it. Then I'm only about a third of the way done. I still have to get to all this junk over there and all that mess out on the other side behind the diving board. I must call that a hot tub. Definitely not what that is. Get more sweeps. Don't want to spend too much time on this because I'm going to be using the power washer out here tomorrow and that'll get a lot of this stuff off. It's not that much over here. Looks like most of it got pulled down into the drains on the other side. This stuff, I might have to move these pots. Well, maybe not. I might be able to come in and just pull gently pull at an angle. Oh yeah, that's doing it. That'll be fine. Oh, this is going to be satisfying. Mostly with the power washer. I don't think the broom is going to be able to get that much of this stuff up. At least get the gravel back over here where it belongs. I mean, was this right here? That's where it is now. Oh, that already looks so much better. That was a blower. I get about 10 minutes or so because things are damp. Wet dog running around on top of everything. But yeah, I bet when cut back, even just going at this with the blower, things should look a lot better. Oh yeah, that, that is so much better. Still messy, still need to do the power washing, right? Especially in areas like this, where things are more caked down, but that's much better. Huge improvement. This side down here is gonna require the most scrubbage, scrubbing, but that's not really surprising because the water was just it was basically a waterfall of mud and sand over here, so I'm not surprised by that. But a lot of this stuff, you can see that stuff so that's sort of ground in there. Power wash will get that up, no problem. The iguana's hibiscus over here. Also, I grabbed a pepper plant because it was on clearance, and it's from Burpee. And I'm like, oh yeah, they have good stuff. It's just the confetti sweet pepper. And I thought, yeah, that's fun. It's fun to have peppers around. I always feel silly buying a pepper plant because... You know, they're so easy to start from seed, but I didn't start any from seed this year. So I figured just buy one, especially if it's on clearance. This looks like it should be ripe, but that is extremely firm. Did I already crack it too much? I think I did. I'm going to take it off there anyways, because I think I did too much damage. Okay, never mind. doesn't want to come off. I'm not going to force it. Just give that a few more days. But uh, yeah, I think it's one of just fun to have peppers around. And then... You know, the iguana and the tortoise and all the animals, they like peppers too. It's an interesting leaf opening up here on the Redemption. 
looks like a Waikiki. It didn't look like a Redemption. Is it? I had a Waikiki here last year. Is they? What's going on? How did that happen? Is it coming out of the same plant as these other leaves? I think it is. It's hard to tell because I've got the cannas hanging over here. There's that one. And then this one. Yeah. Ha. Huh. Got a big white leaf on the Redemption. I'm not mad about it. I actually very much prefer this leaf over this leaf. I like the Waikiki more. Not that this is the Waikiki, but you get what I'm saying. It looks more like a Waikiki. Huh. That's odd. I'm trying to remember to have a peek back at that in a couple days. It'll probably darken up and turn red. Or not. Who knows. New leaf opened up here today on the uh, Pharaoh's Dream. Do you want to call it polar green? Very different plant. And it's glowing. Do you see that? Look at the glow. Various orange and pink and white. I'm thinking the next leaf should have the full variegation on it. So all these faint lines that we're seeing should be a pretty vivid white on the leaves that are to come out of this one. That's so exciting. This thing, you know, it was just like this big, puny, tiny little plant when that showed up. So I'm really happy to see how much that's growing. Supposed to be hardy into zone six. We'll see about that. And then the beautiful dichondra. I just, I couldn't resist. Look, it's just so pretty. I love a dichondra. The dichondra and the ixora, I have a similar issue with them where there are plants that like the sun. And then usually around August, the angle of the sun shifts and there's just not enough sun out here for them and then they tend to rot away. But with the dichondra, when they're in a basket, I usually have better luck with them as opposed to being in the ground. I don't really put them in the ground very often, but in like edges of planters that need a lot of water. Since it's plant stuff with the vinca, I think that this is a wonderful pairing because they're both the drought tolerant plants. I don't know, I figured I'd give it a try. I'm not gonna leave it right here. Need to be able to use this post here. I have a hook up here for a hanging basket, but I don't think, would that look dumb if that were in there? I don't know if that would look right. I'll give it a shot and see how it looks. I mean, may as well since the hook's there. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do this with one hand. I can kind of do it even though he, I don't think y'all can even see what's happening, but he's doing it, got it up there. Yeah, huh? I kind of like it. I don't like that tag in there. From here, it looks nice. Not so sure about from down here, but from up there that looks good. Oh, no, I like that. I think that looks cute. It does kind of take away from the palm trees, which I don't want to happen, right? Because the palm trees are supposed to be the start of the show over here. But I do like how that looks. I have another one of these hooks that I could put up over here on this side and then it would be behind the Robolini palm. But I think that would look kind of weird. So see, to me, this looks intentional, but I feel like if that were over there, it wouldn't look intentional, just look weird. You know, I should, I probably, I need to go back and get another one, don't I? That's what I should do. I should have gotten two. Mess that one up. Uh, that's pretty good. I feel good about everything that got done. In my head, I just keep looking at the pool thing. It's going to be clear, but this is probably going to take a couple weeks to clear up. So that just is what it is. Looking soupy. That's all right. The main thing was getting all the gunk and everything away from the edges of the pool so it doesn't wash back in. And uh, having the salt so that it can be sanitary at some point. This can pick up tomorrow and maybe do some plant stuff. It's supposed to be a plant channel. All I've done is walk around and talk about the pool and mess with cleaning stuff up. Oh, we went to Home Depot and got to see some plants. That was fun. 2900. Glad I stopped when I did with the eight bags. Didn't need to go any higher than that. The little machine thing, the salt cell, that starts working at 2800, I believe. Below that, it shuts off, so that was good. Started off with the either eight or 10 bags I put in there, have a few extra. Definitely going to need some more. It's the next day. I don't know how I can transition that. Okay, update, an abrupt change. I know, that's how things are going today. It's one of those days. After, talk, are, you, are you coming? There you go, come on out. Hey, talk to the, really? That's kind of a cool looking plane though. Not a plane, jet, cool looking jet. Talk to uh, pool guy and uh, it was suggested to just go ahead and uh, drain the water down. Not all the way, 
which makes sense because essentially that's what I'm doing anyways with the backwashing because there's so much silt and debris and stuff in the water that it's just better to just get it out of there than to keep trying to filter it out. It has something to do with like turning the pumps on and off, on and off and on and off and wearing things down. So uh, the pool is draining and I'm on my way back to Home Depot to get more pool salt because I, well, I didn't get enough yesterday and I'm definitely going to need more since draining it down. It just makes sense to do things this way, I suppose. You know, I am not gonna get mad about having to go back to the store where all the plants were 50% off. That's for dang sure. I was thinking that I might grab another one of those hanging baskets because I am pretty obsessed with how that one looks. And I have two more spots where I would like to put baskets, but I only have one hook. So I'm only gonna get one of them hung up in this video. I'll have to order another hook. They had a whole bunch of the Hilly I U's up there and they were some of the only plants that didn't have a yellow sticker on them. So I don't know if they're on clearance or not, but if they are, I would like to get some. They're small, which has its pros and its cons. The pro being much easier to plant and much more affordable. The con is that you gotta wait to get growth out of them. But I have that whole area up there on the hill where the neighbor's yard is all cleared out and looking down on my yard. And I think that the ewes would be a good option for that spot because they only go like five to 10 feet at the max high, the hilly eye upright ewes, and at the maximum four feet wide. I think three feet is more typical. Where they're going to be going, it's partial sun, more like part shade probably. So I would expect them to go like five feet high. So it's like just enough where it's going to obstruct some of the view of some of their yard, but not like completely block off the neighbors because I like the neighbors and I don't want to like completely erase them. But I would also like something else up there to break things up. And uh, I think the use will be a good option because, well, one, they're evergreen, so that's important for privacy. And if they are 50% off, they're only like, I think, 10 bucks. They're five or six of those, and then somebody will have a nice little green screen there, and it won't be so high that the sun can't come over it. I think it's a good option. I am going to be price checking everything because I looked at my receipt this morning, and nothing I bought yesterday was the price that was marked. I try to keep track of those things when I'm shopping, but the pool salts, when you buy a certain number of bags, you get a discount. And so I lost track of everything. So I was, wasn't knowing like what the discount was off the top of my head. It wasn't a big deal. Like the hibiscus, it had a big yellow sticker. It said five bucks on it. And uh, according to the receipt, it was like, I think $12. So, so it was 50% off my microphone tangled up in there. Thank goodness for wireless microphones, right? Because I haven't done the driving and talking thing in a long time because we can't hear anything when the phone's up there on the tripod. It's certainly not safe to hold the phone or camera, whatever I'm using while driving. That worked out well, except I'm sure the audio is probably horrible because I'm in the car and there's a lot of echo, but you got the point. We got to have a little car ride, it was fun. I would have just waited until I got here to do all that talking, but I noticed when going through the clips I filmed yesterday while I was here, I had to edit out the majority of everything because the background music was so loud. So I don't know how much I'll be able to film once I'm in there. These prices are so freaking good. The stuff that's a really good deal is mostly like lilacs and some cotton easters, lots of azaleas. I think I probably showed all these things yesterday. I'm um, say I'm good. I'm not gonna be able to get much more in the car. This is where you can start getting into trouble in the garden, right? Because I look at little clearance shrubs like this, add all kinds of arbs and other things, and I was like, well, I could get a whole bunch of those and do this and do that, and forget that there's intention, right? I would like to have intention with a lot of the plants that go in the garden. I already know that I love yews. That's why I was buying more of those, but as far as planting a whole hedge of little baby arbs, that's something to think about, because there are lots of different types, and like with the emerald green giant specifically, <laughs> specifically, green giant arbs, that's what I'm mostly referring to. They have a whole bunch of them over there, right underneath the speaker, so I can't take you over there. No, they're like five bucks on clearance. They're a couple feet tall, so you have to wait a few years, but that's not that big of a deal for them to, you know, 
five bucks a pop, save a lot of money that way. But I don't want green giant orbs. They get too big. There's different types now. There are other variations you can get that don't get as big, but still have the same vigor and appearance. Just, you don't see them around as much. So that took some self-control. I'm not getting a hibiscus tree. These weren't marked down yesterday. At least they didn't have the tags on them. And with the tropicals, I was very unclear as what was on sale because there's no big sign like there is with the other things that said, you know, trees and shrubs 50% off. So I might grab one of these too. I just got home and realized that I probably should have taken the beach ball out of there first. I'll be able to get it out of there. This so much better, right? Turbo is very confused right now. So the plan at this point now is to just brush it all to the deep end where the drain can get it and can filter everything out and then to fill it back up. It wasn't supposed to drain down this far. Don't know what happened there. Somebody else told me they'd watch the water level. And, uh, well, here we are. No comment on that. It just is what it is. It's definitely too low. Look at all the wrinkles that you have to pull out of the liner now. I don't know how to do that. I think you have to use like a, what's it called? A, the, the toilet plunger. That's what I've seen them do before. Yeah, that's real gross. All right, I'm going to get brushing. I don't know if there's going to be anything to pick up from with this or not. I can see that there's water under the liner, so it's a good thing I stopped with all that rain. You can't have the water level too low or else the water can come up from underneath everything and then you have an even bigger problem which it looks like if it had gone much lower that really would have been a problem look at all the wrinkles and creases down there that's from the pressure on the outside pushing back in so I should actually probably do this fairly quickly nothing to be able to refill it quickly that's gonna take it is, I'm gonna I'm gonna get cleaning <laughs> he beep he wants to get in there so bad I'd say that's a vast improvement gonna get about a foot of water in there six to eight inches maybe, whatever it looks like it's going to need to uh, get these wrinkles taken care of. And then just have to keep brushing the gunk down to the deep end and that should do the trick. It's gonna take a while, a couple of days probably, but I think that that's going to work out better than what I was trying before. That and the liner had a lot of wrinkles in it already from when the pool company installed it that were bugging me. So hopefully this will give me the opportunity to go in here and fix that so long as I make sure to do it at the right moment. There's kind of a sweet spot with the liners where you have to get in and pull. You need some water above them. So uh, I'd say when there's even just like three to four inches is enough weight to keep it pushed down, but not enough weight that you can't move it. Does that make any sense? It doesn't matter. That won't be happening this weekend. That won't even be in the video, probably. Maybe next week's video. I don't know. I came over here and I measured the best that I could. This is a very awkward spot the distance from the bottom of the roof overhang to this bracket right here because I'm trying to get an idea of where I need to hang the other bracket for the baskets. I got two new ones. I only have one bracket though, so I'm only hanging one up right now. And I was thinking that I might put it right here. It would make the most sense to put it on this piece of wall for symmetry because this one is on that exterior piece, so the other one should probably be in there, so it kind of frame things in. But I just, I don't know, I feel like that would also look kind of dumb, and I just, in my head, it's gonna look better having it right here. You know the reasoning behind it, it's just my gut tells me on this board right here would look better. That, and I think it'd be nice when you walk out the door to have a basket not that far away over there. I don't know, I don't, it's just, it's, it's not working for us. It. That's speaking to me, I don't wanna put it right there. And this is the, a hat. This friend of mine was over, left me a hat the other day. This is the piece that I'm using right here. They go into a bracket that looks like this, or it is this, right here. Nifty little thing, and it has all these indentations in it. I like these because you can adjust the angle on them. So everywhere there's an indentation, you can lift them up and set them back down into a iron peg that's down here inside of this bracket piece. That works out really well for a spot like this because I'm not putting these on a flat wall. So if I were to put just a flat bracket up there, a flat hanger that is, then it's going to stick out at a weird angle, at least on these side pieces right here. This one right here, I don't really know if that's gonna be an issue, but if it is, I can adjust it, which is perfect, that's what I want. The other option is to put this up here behind the Robolini. I just, 
I don't know, it seems kind of silly. Are we going to be able to see it? Maybe. I'm going to end up putting one there anyways. I'm ordering another bracket because I have the other hanging basket. So there will be one there, one there, and one right there. Although that does make me think if I'm going to have one on each one of these exterior angled pieces that maybe I should do the <laughs> bracket on this angled piece right there. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to think about it for a minute. Made up my mind. Decided what's over here. <laughs> Just you can't. You don't know where I am. Over here in the corner, by the door. Oh wow! Really need to paint over here. I noticed that up here. Need to sand this and paint it. But this is different. I just noticed this. This door's new. It's only a few years old, and it's got. That's just silicone beading coming out. But yeah, so that's neither here nor there. Don't need to focus on that. I decided on doing it over here because there's already so much going on on the other side and ultimately it doesn't even matter, right? Because I'm going to put the other one up in like a week or so. Measured from both directions to the center and then I lost it and the bottom of the bracket was at 17 inches. So right there, that's where I want the bottom of this to go right in the center of that X. I think that'll be good. And look at this tiny little screwdriver it came with. I don't know what you would use that for unless they're assuming that maybe you're gonna drill out a pilot hole. I'm not drilling out a pilot hole. And it looks like the tip popped out of the drill. Cool. Why these ever exist when they're not magnetic, I don't understand. That's so dumb to make these where they don't actually hold the bit in them. I'm gonna, well, I'm not gonna find that. Nope, that's gone forever. I'm gonna go inside and try and find a different attachment to use on the drill. I don't, maybe I could, as long as it's not in the garden over here, maybe I can find it. No pilot hole necessary, got a lot of wood right there. Oh, hear that, hear it? Click, magnets. What a difference they make. Okay, and now for the fun, well I guess I was going to say this is the fun part. I think the part where you actually hang the plant up is what most people would consider to be the fun part. But I like this part too, because this is when you know you're done. So let's talk about up here, the little clippy pieces. It's supposed to set down inside of them. Uh oh. So having those keeps it from moving. You can just lift it up gently and twist it to get a new angle on the whole thing if you need to. That can also be nifty if you have other trees or shrubbery nearby, just stuff that's getting in the way of the basket. You know, sometimes you just gotta shift things around. I think that's good. Not sure if it's completely even. Don't know if we even be able to tell because the other one's behind that Edenidia palm. Yeah, if it's off by a little bit, I don't think anybody's gonna be able to tell. I feel like that's a lot higher than that one, but I measured it. I measured it twice on each one. It was kind of hard to measure it over here, and that's probably just my eyes playing tricks on me. Now that one's pretty high. It's just hard to tell. I think having the basket on it makes it seem like it's lower too. This is not what I should be gesticulating with. That's not a good idea. I'm gonna put that over here for right now. All right, who's the lucky basket that's gonna go up over here? One of them is more full than the other, and uh, I don't, actually, these are about the same probably. Mm, no, never mind, no they're not. I think that this is going to look so good, it's going to even things out <laughs> so nicely over here. Make sure, oh I need to get that tag off of there too. I don't like the way that tag looks. Oh, that's, that's like, it's, it's making it difficult to stay on the ladder. Got the tag out, <laughs> barely. Probably should have just done that before I hung the thing up. Yeah, I'll move the ladder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, looks good. <laughs> I feel like I'll hype things up an awful lot just for hanging up a basket. I'm excited about it though. I've wanted to have a basket hanging over there for years, and now I do. And this is great. I probably should be repotting these dichondras, but, well, it's just, it's not on the agenda right now. Other things are going on. So maybe you can see what I was saying when I said that things are already so heavy over here. There's already a lot going on over here, so putting in another hanging basket right here, it'll look awesome, but for right now, I think that having the one right here 
is a good start. Now I just have to make sure it doesn't shade the passion vine. I hadn't thought about that. No, I'm sure it's fine. I have another piece of this trellis material that I need to put right here. You can see the vines wanting to do some climbing. But I don't know if I have any more clips. I have this held up with siding clips. And I need to order a whole bunch more siding clips because I was thinking about putting those green panels over here, so maybe that'll wait till next week. Also, we need to get some paint. That's terrible. This was all done just a few years ago. The sun gets really strong over here. That's been my only hesitation with those green panels. Like, I wanted to just fill this up with green on the wall, but I don't know, won't they just fade, like, basically immediately in the sun? I don't know, I'll pick one out that says UV resistance and we'll see what happens. It's something to think about. Those green panels, they're not terribly expensive, but when you're filling in a big space, they get pricey. So I want to be sure that it's something that I really want to do. Yeah, also I think I found another siding clip, so sometime tonight or tomorrow I'm going to try and get that trellis put back up. Because I already have the ladder out here. May as well do that. Also have a light bulb that I need to change. That one. This one. This one right here. That's going to be fun. Have a few things in the way that I'll be moving before I can get that done. And uh, lastly, got a, another orchid in the mail. It's beautiful, isn't it? This is a Phalaenopsis. Has lots of spots on it. That's what this one's known for. I'm turning it around so I can pull the tag up. So that you can see the name, this is much easier for me than typing it out on the screen. Camera's being pretty weird though. Phalaenopsis Raymond Burr Fiji Sunset. Why are you not, what's the problem? Eh, not exactly how I figured the week was going to go, but uh, hey, at least we got some rain, right? And picked up some great clearance plants, got a whole bunch of ewes back here. And there's side of the wall that are going to get planted up. This is improved since you last saw it. It's been a day since I showed you when the water was lower. Been brushing it. The filter seems to be picking it up. So things are moving in the right direction as far as that's concerned. One last thing I wanted to check up on is that weird leaf on the Redemption. Because it's been a couple days since you all saw it. Is it still white? Uh, an interesting leaf. I think that that's beautiful. Like I said when I saw it before... I prefer that leaf over the other ones. It doesn't seem to want to open up though. It's been a couple days. What's going on there? It has been a lot cooler. It's been in the 70s, which is very, very weird. I had a hoodie and pants on until about 11 o'clock this morning because it was so chilly. There was a breeze. Don't get that in July very often. Usually, you know, triple digits and things out here just cook it. In fact, I think it was about this time last year that my hydrangea trees just turned brown and turned into crispy, burnt looking marshmallows. This is colored up nicely too, since I last showed it to you. But the next leaf on that one's gonna be really pretty. Sky today, beautiful, look at these clouds. They're so pretty, they're the low ones with the flat bottoms of those clouds. I feel like the sky hasn't been all that pretty the last couple summers. It's nice to have that interaction where the cool front and the warm fronts are meeting up, which can be problematic, right? But. Hey, at least it left us with a few days of really nice weather. Probably going to take advantage of that and do some cleaning in the garage this weekend. And then get all these ewes planted up. I'm going to show them to you, but we'll talk about it another time when I get them planted up. And if I've learned anything, people are really bored by ewes. I don't know why. I think they're fantastic. I got, I think, six. One, two, three, four, five, six of the hilly I ewes. Those are the ones that go five to ten feet and about three to four feet wide. And then I grabbed five of the Hixie I use, which go eight to 10 feet, but they're much more narrow. Both of these are great for hedging. The Hixie eyes, I think, look kind of funny when they're planted on their own because they're just sort of spindly. So having them close together, you get a nice quick hedge with them. Great price, too. 50% off of everything. That's fantastic. That's not to love about that. Going to use the Hixie eyes down here on the other side of that berm. We already have some to fill in some gaps to create a quicker, tighter hedge. And then the hilly eyes, I'm going to put kind of staggered right up here just to create a little bit of a barrier, but not so much that like we're fully separated, but just add some privacy and some evergreens. I'm always trying to get more green out here for fall through winter. It makes being outside so much more enjoyable when you're not surrounded by nothing but deciduous plants. Uh, hey, yeah, hey, thanks for hanging out. <laughs> this is a pretty all over the place vlog. It's partially because I didn't know what I was doing with this. I've never had the entire backyard flood before. I've had runoff build up and had some flooding where dirt got into the pool 
and then you just you know keep backwashing it and brushing it and backwashing and brushing. Eventually, it clears up. But I'd never had anything happen before out here where the entire patio actually was covered in water, so the pool filled with mud. And I think a lot of that has to do with there being construction gunk up there. There's a lot of sand down in here. They put a bunch of I think it's called rickrack rock by their fence. I don't mind how it looks. Looks fine. But there's a heavy layer of sand underneath that. And this is all turf up there too. So it was designed to drain very evenly. And it, it seems pretty even. Like their pool looks fine. But where it's coming out over here onto my property, there are a few spots where it's gushing. So I'm going to have to go up there and spend some time with a shovel and trenching things out to go to a drain. There's a big drain up here. There's another drain over there. But it was just, it was so much water at one time. I don't know if any of that would have made a difference if I had done it prior. Uh, who knows? But I think it would be smart now that I know that that might be an issue to get that trenched out to help avoid this happening again. I don't know. I may even end up graveling everything on top of the hill from here and over, which I, I don't really want to do because I'm not crazy about that aesthetic. I really like mulches and being able to get into the soil and everything, but just as far as preventing runoff and mess, that might be the way to go. Because then when everything washes through, it will be washing over gravel and not washing out the ground and the garden and all the mud and mulch and everything. If this does happen again, when it happens again, it'll happen again. Hopefully not to this extent, because I've never dealt with this before, but there will be more overflow. It's going to happen. Typically like a once, maybe twice a year thing, usually in the spring when we're having storms. And again, it's never been something where I had to drain down the water in the pool though. This is, that's new. That's a whole new experience. Turbo's been having fun. He likes the adventure of going down the steps and being able to jump right in and run around. So that's been nice for him. The plan with that foul was to put it right here on this post where I have that epidendron orchid. The epidendron orchid is going to go over here. And the Vanda orchid was going to go up on the trunk of that Robolini palm. But anything happening with any of these yet? Doesn't look like it. I just potted these up like five days ago. These were the gingers, the curcumas that showed up in the mail in last week's video where they sent me eight and I ordered six. Okay, I, d I don't know what else I can get done in this video because I have all these little piddly things to do that aren't very exciting so I'm just going to wrap it up. Chances are when we pick up next week it's going to be from basically right here. Uh, I'm sure the water will still be dirty but hopefully by the end of next week's video it'll be cleared up and uh, there will be some more plant stuff going on. I do have some repots I need to do and I think I have all the materials sourced out to get it done. I was having issues finding the right pot sizes for a few of the plants but I think I have that ironed out. I like how the hanging baskets look. I think they look really nice up there. This one, it may end up needing more sun, but the main frond that is sheltering the top of this one is one of the older fronds on the Adenidia, so it's going to be the next one to go. So I'm just going to leave it alone and remind myself to not overwater, that it's a beautiful plant, and that if I overlove it, if I smother it, it will die. That's what usually happens with me and Dichondra. The sun shifts and I continue with my regular watering, which I know better. I know we're not supposed to do that, but it's so tricky, you know? Is anybody else out there like that? A heavy-handed waterer? And you just, you feel like you gotta give it a drink even though you know you probably shouldn't. I won't do that with this one. Actually, I can't promise that. I probably will, but I'm gonna do my best not to. Old habits die hard. Anyways, thanks for hanging out. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody who's going on your gardens. The storm that flooded out the backyard in a lot of areas in St. Louis and around St. Louis, I know that, that was a huge storm that hit a lot of places. So hope everybody's doing okay. Things aren't really bad here. Like I said, I'm not upset about this. This is nothing. Champagne problems. I'm, make it a point to never complain about issues with the pool. It's such a luxury that if I gotta spend some extra time cleaning it, no big deal, right? A real dumb and entitled thing to complain about. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye. Bye.